he showed that throughout camp. He showed the, the work ethic and the intensity in every single rep, whether that was an individual drill or a team drill. He showed us that he can do those things. And at the same time, his leadership ability off the field, his teammates love him, his teammates follow him. He has the respect of his teammates. So I think it was just a, a combination of a bunch of things that led us to that decision. Coach, you, you guys talk a lot about controlling your response um, to different situations. And I know that that was one point of emphasis with James. Um, you wanted to see growth there. Are the, have you seen signs of that growth during this camp of the, the way he's handled those situations? 100%. I think that's the biggest, biggest thing I've been preaching to him is it goes back to that word consistency, right? Consistency and response are kind of one and the same, right? When, when a bad thing's happened, can you be the same person? Every play is its own play. So who cares what happened last play? You must respond and be that consistent player that every play is its own play. And I think he's bought into that, and I think you can see throughout all camp uh, that he's done a really good job with his response. Hey, hey Kenny, uh, how far has James come just with his knowledge of the offense? Obviously, he's you know had to deal with a lot mentally over his career. How far has he come uh, learning the system with you guys? Light years. I mean, it's come a long way from, from spring ball, but I think all the guys have. You know, I don't want to just limit limit that to James. I think Tate Rodemaker, Jordan Travis, Chubba, they've all come a long way learning, learning this offense. Uh, I do think James is experienced, and, you know, he's been in a bunch of different systems, so some things piggyback on one another. So he, he maybe gets a, a concept a little quicker because he maybe ran that in a different verbiage or something similar to it uh, from that standpoint. But I think all those guys have done a really, really nice job of learning this system. Hey, Kenny, uh, you, you mentioned experience. I guess how much does that play a role in this, be it someone, whether how quickly he learned the offense or just having that in-game experience, how valuable do you think that was for him during all this? It really had no value for our evaluation process. No, we went into it completely clean slate. Um, I think that experience only really, you know, when you go through things, you go through things. It's part of it, and I think that experience helped him in terms of adapting to maybe some of our schemes quicker because he may have been exposed to more schemes than, you know, a, a true freshman had. So I think things like that, the experience may have helped. But from a football standpoint, from a, what we were looking for, you know, that had, that had no effect on the decision he earned uh, here in the starting quarterback job. And I'm extremely proud of him. Hey, Coach, uh, something that you all talked about last week, which is the frustration with the offense uh, and its inability to be consistent and the self-inflicted mistakes. I hear your voice a little bit hoarse today. Is that just the intensity from game week, or are you still kind of yelling at them for that consistency? Um, if I'm not hoarse, then you should ask, what is wrong? Okay, and this, is, this is normal. This is my season voice. There will be about four months out of the year that I don't sound like this. Or if we have a day or two days off, I may get it back. But uh, this is this is really my voice for the next uh, four months. Hey, coach. Obviously, y'all named James the starter, but is there a concern? Uh, y'all have a plan for the backup, whoever that is, Jordan or Tate, to get them in the game or into a game as quickly as possible, given the unknowns of this season as it surrounds COVID and also with them being new in the system as well? Well, from a backup standpoint, all those guys are still competing. I mean, and that's the one thing, I mean, name to start, but we're still competing. And that's what I told them when we got off the field, whether it's starting job, backup, competition never ends. And everybody, every day, need to push one another to be the very best they can be. So I know there's not a clear backup. There's not a backup. It's just a multitude of guys that are competing every day, that can put us in the best position to be successful. So that's the mindset of our room. That's the mindset of this team is compete, 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 try to get better, and, and that's what that looks like. Last time we did talk to you, uh, as Perry mentioned, you, you weren't in a great place after that uh, second scrimmage. How did you uh, – what did you see from the offense this past week? Coach Norvell seemed to indicate that uh, he's seen some positive uh, growth over that time. Oh, a lot of response, you know, you saw guys come out and just execute. You saw guys come out and just do their job with with high effort. You know, it's a football is a really simple game. 
we got to get 11 guys, right, doing their job and going full speed. That's really it. And then guess what? The schemes, all that matters, right? Create numbers, levers, angles, grass, all that stuff matters. But at the end of the day, if we can get 11 guys to give unbelievable effort and do the little things they're supposed to do, we're going to be successful. And we saw that last week, and we had success. It's amazing how that works. You mentioned competition at the running back spot. What's LaDamian sort of done for, for that segment? He's been, doing, he's been doing a great job. I mean, that's a guy who has a, some dynamic playmaking ability. Uh, I really, really – I love the kid, personality, work ethic. Uh, he's done a really, really nice job for us. Since we last talked to you, we heard about uh, Isaiah Bolden kind of moving to your side of the ball, I guess. What have you seen from him at receiver? And who else have you really seen him stand out? Maybe the, the guys who aren't, don't, aren't the – you don't know what you have in them maybe coming into the year. Uh, well, have you ever seen a lightning bolt? That's what uh, Isaiah Bolton reminds me of. He is fast. Uh, he's just fast. You know, when he's on the field and he's running home run balls or any sort of vertical route, he's fast. And that's the one thing, I mean, you can't coach speed. If somebody's fast, he's fast. There's, there's no scheme around it. He's going to go fast. And that's what you see when you see him. And he's working every day to be, to be better and to – Readapt to the wide receiver position. In terms of some other guys, you know, I think Jordan Young's had a really nice camp. I, I really do. I think he's done a really good job for us at the wideout position. Been very consistent for us. Has made really nice plays, uh, both in the running game and the passing game. Coach Norvell mentioned there were several players that, that were not able to get through the entire practice because you guys are kind of in a, in a game week mode. Is is that concerning or is 10 days enough for them to get up to the standard? Well, whether the standard is, you know, what we allow. And uh, we're just going to have to do a great job of coaches managing that. I think that's going to dictate a lot of teams this year, not just us, is managing those players and understanding what they can handle uh, within a game and substitution patterns. I think all those things are going to be huge and critical parts of the game because of, you know, the situation this summer and, Kids maybe not being as in great a shape as they normally are uh, this time of year. But I think our guys are, are pushing through it and doing everything they can to get better. And all we can control is today and then tomorrow. And we're going to just get better tomorrow and better the next day. And where we are in 10 days, I can't tell you. But I can tell you this, it's going to be better than it was today. I don't know if you've given any thought to the fact that, you know, stadiums are not going to be near capacity. I mean, will that affect the way that you guys call in place, signal in place? Will you, I mean, you know, we talk about silent counts. I mean, are, are you guys going to have to do that as well so that the opposing team can't hear what you guys are doing? Oh, we're not going to have to. I mean, that's not a process for us in any way, shape or form. I mean, I've coached high school ball before. There's no crowds. So this will be uh, where I coach high school ball. So this is just, you know, another day. For me, from that standpoint, I'm, I'm actually somewhat excited from the standpoint of see what guys go out there and actually love the game. You know, that's what you're going to see this year is guys go out there and you may not have a crowd, but how much do you love the game? How much do you love your brothers? How much do you love competing? Because that's really what's going to drive your effort. That's going to drive everything on that game day is how much do you love to win? So that's what I'm excited for. I'm excited to see those guys who get out on that field, see competition and compete to win. Thank you. Y'all have a great day. Hey.